Today, the market's uncertainty principle. Hello again, this is Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and property news, and this is our weekly market update. Formulated by the German physicist and Nobel laureate Werner Heisenberg in 1927, the uncertainty principle states that we cannot know both the position and speed of a particle, such as a photon or electron, with perfect accuracy. The more we nail down the particle's position, the less we know about its speed and vice versa. Now, I think the same can be said of the markets, as light is dawning that it's hard to pin down the true vectors of inflation and so market value, as bond yields are tending to rise despite the expectation of rate cuts from central bankers soon. As a result, the US dollar and US markets alongside Japan seem more in favour than Europe, while gold and crypto might be risk shelters or not. But overall, the past week was an object lesson in uncertainty as emerging data questioned analysts' assumptions as we saw weekly declines that snapped seven straight weekly gains while the dollar rose and was on track for its strongest week since the middle of January as US inflation data diluted hopes for interest rate cuts. Plus, we had the triple witching, which always adds a bit of extra spice and uncertainty. Readings on US consumer prices and producer prices indicated that inflation remained sticky, which dampened expectations that the US Federal Reserve will cut rates by its June meeting. And I covered this in detail in yesterday's show. The central bank is widely expected to hold rates steady at its policy meeting next week, but investors will be watching the central bank's economic projections, including its interest rate forecast. Some analysts are even warning the Fed could remain on hold for the full year. In addition, a survey from the University of Michigan showed its preliminary reading on consumer sentiment and inflation expectations were little changed in March to a reading of 76.5 from 76.9. MSCI's gauge of stocks across the globe fell for its third straight daily decline, the longest streak since the start of the year, and was down 0.48% on the week. The stock 600 index closed down 0.32%, while Europe's broad FTS Euro First 300 index fell 0.37%. On Wall Street, the Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 0.59% to 38,714. The SP 500 lost 0.65% to 5,117, and the Nasdaq Composite lost 0.96% to 15,973. For the week, the SP 500 lost 0.13%, the Dow shed 0.02%, and the Nasdaq declined 0.73%. Microsoft and Apple paced most of the mega cap tech stocks down, and in part, it's because of positioning leading into triple witching, as well as a stumble in big tech. A nearly 14% slump in Adobe also weighed on sentiment after the software maker reported weak and expected second quarter revenues guidance on higher competition and weak demand for its AI offerings. AI leader Nvidia dropped again, and the ongoing swoon in Tesla continued to alarm as the electric vehicle's giant losses for the year to date hit 35%, knocking some $250 billion from its market value as it dropped another 4% on Thursday, although it rose slightly on Friday. Crypto stocks such as MicroStrategy Incorporated, Marathon Digital and Coinbase Global cut losses to trade higher as Bitcoin, which was down more than 10% earlier on, moved off session lows. The dollar index gained 0.08% to 10345, recouping some of the prior week's decline with a gain of 0.71%, with the year up 0.06% to 1.0888 on the session. Sterling weakened 0.13% at 1.2735, and against the Japanese yen, the dollar strengthened 0.51% to 149.12, despite expectations the Bank of Japan is expected to end its negative interest rate policy at its meeting next week. The yield on benchmark US 10-year notes was 4.309% after reaching 4.322%. That's the highest since February the 23rd. The 10-year yield has jumped 22 basis points this week. That's the most since middle of October. The two-year note yield, which typically moves in step with interest rate expectations, rose to 4.732% and has risen 24 basis points for the week 
That's the largest jump in two months. With inflation proving difficult to fully stamp out, attention is turning to the factors driving price increases. In his State of Union address on March the 7th, Joe Biden criticized big U.S. companies for charging exorbitant prices as they looked to boost their profits by price gouging. There's no doubt that U.S. companies have enjoyed a huge boost in profits during the pandemic era disruptions, with profit margins jumping to 17%. In the April June 2022 period, from 13.4% in late 2019. But profit margins have remained elevated even as supply problems have been largely resolved. Last July to September, corporate profit margins were still at 16.4%. That's the highest level since the 1960s, apart from the pandemic era. And Biden's Council of Economic Advisers estimates that junk fees, those mandatory, but are hidden on products such as online ticket sales, amount to some 90 billion US dollars a year or more than $650 per US household. A US Labor Department study also pointed to widespread shrinkflation, which occurs when manufacturers meet costs by reducing the amount of product a consumer receives. The study found it was common across food and household commodities, including pair of chips paper towels, cereal, cleaning supplies, and candy. But it also appears that some of the reason that inflation is proving to be so sticky is behavioural. Companies are quick to lift prices when their costs rise, but are much slower to cut prices when cost pressures ease. And on the other hand, consumers, it appears, become used to paying higher prices, especially when unemployment is low and their finances are in relatively good shape. Inflation is sticky. Period. U.S. equity funds drew inflows for a third consecutive week in the seven days to March the 13th, with investors optimistic about a rally on Wall Street and clinging to hopes of rate cuts this year, even as inflation does prove stubborn. According to data from the London Stock Exchange Group, investors purchased $4.93 billion worth of U.S. equity funds. That's the largest net weekly purchase since February the 14th. Oil prices dipped a day after topping 85 US a barrel for the first time since November. The oil benchmarks closed out the week with a gain of around 3%. US crude settled down 0.32% lower on the day at $81.03 a barrel, while Brent settled down 0.8% at $85.30 a barrel. Supply is becoming a question as Ukraine damaged around 12% of Russia's refining capacity with drone attacks. And the IEA said that they anticipate a supply deficit throughout this year if OPEC Plus continues to cut output in the second quarter. This is a significant change in their forecasts as they were pointing to a surplus in their earlier prediction. Trend and momentum indicators support a further rise in oil prices, but oil bulls could hit a wall if we see a hawkish shift from the Fed at next week's meeting. Gold futures dropped below 2,160 US for the first decline in four weeks due to the unexpectedly strong US inflation data, which shifted expectations for rate cuts by the Federal Reserve to a later time. Precious metals also suffered from the sharp recovery of the US dollar and treasury yields after those reports showed that US producer and consumer prices exceeded forecasts in February. Given that, it's hard to see any fresh catalyst to propel gold higher, at least in the short term. Now, the European Central Bank maintained the deposit rate at 4% for a fourth straight time at last week's meeting. And it looks like rates have peaked, but the ECB have been reluctant to signal that it's contemplating cutting rates, although the markets have priced in a first cut in the summer. The ECP remains concerned about lowering rates too early and then having to zigzag on policy and raise rates if inflation starts to rise. The battle to bring eurozone inflation down to the 2% target is going wellish, but remains unfinished with headline inflation at 2.6% and core inflation at 3.1%. But comments from senior ECB officials have a marked departure from the message the ECB has been sending. Belgium central bank head Pierre Wanish said that the European Central Bank will cut rates even if it's not fully sure that inflation is headed to its 2% target. And the governor of the Bank of Greece went a step further and said that the ECB should cut rates twice before its August break. 
and the governor of the Bank of Finland said earlier on Friday that if inflation continued to drop substantially towards the 2% target, then the ECB could slowly loosen policy close to the summer. And Klaus Knott, the head of the Dutch central bank, said he anticipated three cuts in 2024, slightly fewer than the financial markets had been pricing in. But the ECB will find it challenging to act independently and implement numerous rate cuts if the Fed adopts a hawkish stance, leading to an appreciation of the US dollar. So the euro US dollar outlook remains pretty bearish. The DAX in Germany ended down 0.08%, while the CAC 40 in France rose 0.04%, and the FTSE 100 in London was down 0.2%. Most Asian stocks fell sharply on Friday, as Holton expected US inflation readings spurred more concerns of higher for longer interest rates, with a barrage of upcoming central bank meetings coming squarely into focus. But all eyes were on Japan, where wage growth is at a 30-year high, as Japan's biggest companies agreed to raise wages by 5.28% for 2024. That's the heftiest pay hikes in 33 years, according to the country's largest union group, and also on expectations that the Bank of Japan will begin to lift rates ahead. However, the Bank of Japan is expected to hold off until it obtains a clearer understanding of the wage landscape, following the second and third rounds of negotiations scheduled between the end of March and the beginning of April. Japanese yen lost 0.39% on Thursday after the US dollar jumped higher due to stronger than expected producer price data. But for now, a broadly stronger US dollar explains why the yen couldn't get a further move this week. Japan's Nikkei 225 index fell 0.33% on Friday and was set for a 2.3% decline as investors continued to lock in profits from record highs hit last week. The topics rose 0.6% but lost around 2% over the week. Broader Asian markets also retreated, weighed by a mix of losses in technology stocks and weak data from China. China's Shanghai Shenzhen CSI 300 fell 0.22%, while the Shanghai Composite Index rose 0.54%, coming further off four months' highs as weak house prices data for February showed little relief for the country's beleaguered property sector. The PBOC left its MLF rate unchanged, while home prices fell for a 13th month as China warned that all efforts deployed so far couldn't slow bleeding in the country's problematic property sector. New home prices actually fell 1.4% over the year. That's faster than the 0.7% drop in January and the biggest decline in 13 months. Losses in mainland stocks and heavyweight techs dragged Hong Kong Hang Seng's index down 1.42%. And Wuhan Biologics and Wuhu App Tech were the top decliners on the index amid persistent concerns over US sanctions against Chinese biotechnology companies. Apple's supplier Foxcom, formerly known as Hon High Precision Industry, was a key outlier among Asian tech stocks on Friday, though. The contract electronics maker clocked a 33% spike in its fourth quarter profit and said it expects to benefit greatly from increased demand for server technology from the artificial intelligence industry. But losses in tech pulled South Korea's Cosby down 1.91%, while India's Nifty 50 index was slammed by a heavy dose of profit-taking earlier in the week and was down 0.56% on the day. Australia's SX200 slid amidst heavyweight profit taking after hitting a record high earlier in the week, ahead of a Reserve Bank of Australia meeting next week, where the central bank is widely expected to maintain its hawkish course as inflation remains above its 2% annual target and is definitely sticky. Analysts at ANZ said they expected the RBA to only turn neutral on policy by May and that the bank is likely to maintain a mild tightening bias next week. Markets still expect the Reserve Bank, which hands down its cash rate decision on Tuesday, to cut interest rates in September, but traders walk back the likelihood of a rate cut in August. The S&P ASX 200 closed the day down 0.6% and retreated 2.3% across the week versus last Friday's record close of 7,847 points. The benchmark actually ended the week pretty much where it stood at the start of the month, 
wiping the near 200 point rally that drove the market to its all time high just five sessions earlier. The resources sector dominated by iron ore majors, BHP Group, Rio Tinto, and Fortescue Metals finished the day down somewhere around 1.9% and with a fall of 3.4% over the week that saw iron ore prices extend heavy losses. The biggest risk to the Australian economy is now materialising a slowdown in commodity prices, particularly iron ore, said economist Peter Esso of Esso Capital. We already are getting government signals that the budget will be weaker, less taxes from mining and higher unemployment. The real story isn't happening at Reserve Bank headquarters in Martin Place. It's happening at the ports. Commodity price falls have the ability to push Australia into recession by the end of the year, he said. Lithium miners also tumbled on Friday as the battery metal price marked losses of 80% over the past 12 months. Mineral resources lost 2.7% to $65.91, and Pilbara Minerals dropped 6.2% to $3.91. Northern Territory-based Core Lithium lost 5.3% to $0.14, cents after revealing it would moth its finished mine this week due to the lithium price crash. But copper extended a rally as China said it would cut production. The big banks also fell after broker UBS added to a chorus of negative calls from analysts around valuation risks and rated National Australia Bank, Westpac and Commonwealth Bank a sell. We remain of the view that very optimistic assumptions are required to justify the run-up in bank share prices, UBS said. Elsewhere, Macquarie was at 197.71. And Tabcor shares tumbled 5.3% to 72.5 cents after its chief executive quit the business on allegations he used offensive language. The Australian two-year yield rose to 3.794%, while the Aussie was at 65.60 against a stronger US dollar. And finally, Bitcoin remained volatile, at one stage slumping more than 7% in just a couple of hours. It was last at 68,434 US. Digital token is gaining popularity as a store of value given its limited supply and worries over US fiscal policy, although critics still label it as a Ponzi scheme, where early investors sell to later investors at a profit. Volatility is nothing new in crypto markets, of course, with Solana up 15% today to 195.96 US, a coin to equal gains of well above 60% over the, just the past month. And the mysterious identity of Bitcoin's creator has been a topic of discussion and speculation since the cryptocurrency's inception. The possibility of unmasking the creator, has sparked intense debate within the crypto community, with many speculating about the potential outcomes for Bitcoin if the figure behind it were to be revealed. The name first appeared in a paper published in 2008 that detailed the design of Bitcoin. And Satoshi is said to have stayed active in Bitcoin's creation and in the blockchain until around 2010, but hasn't been heard from since then. Despite various claims and theories, the true identity is shrouded in mystery. Most believe Satoshi holds about 1.1 million bitcoins. However, this is only an estimate, with some speculating it could be between 600,000 and 1.1 million, worth between approximately 43 billion and 80 billion US dollars at current rates. This amount is said to be spread across various addresses, and it's believed that these bitcoins were acquired as a reward for mining during the early days of Bitcoin. Now, a UK High Court ruled on Thursday that an Australian computer scientist is not the founder, despite his claims to the contrary. He was taken to court by the Crypto Open Patent Alliance, COPA, to stop him from suing Bitcoin developers. COPA's members include Twitter founder Jack Dorsey's payments firm Block. Judge James Miller, presiding over the case, said there was overwhelming evidence that Wright was not Satoshi. Dr. Wright is not the author of the Bitcoin white paper, said the judge. Dr. Wright is not the person who adopted or operated under the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto in the period 2008 to 2011. And Gede Karov, the founder of Biscay Club, said if the veil of secrecy surrounding Bitcoin's credit is lifted, it could shatter the idealized image that many hold of the cryptocurrency. Its enigmatic creator 
and the enmity surrounding its origins have contributed to its allure, he stated. However, attaching a human face with a history, especially one potentially fraught with controversy, could irreversibly alter Bitcoin's perception and value in the eyes of future investors. So once again, the uncertainty principle is seen here in action. And more generally, markets are now in a very uncertain state. And as I said last week, a pullback is definitely possible at this stage, particularly with the stubborn, sticky inflation. We'll be watching central banks over the next week or two to see how this all plays out. And uh, just before I go, I should explain, you might have heard some noises off. I'm dog sitting today. So as well as my two, I now have an additional beagle to look after. And the beagle was making quite a lot of noise through the recording. But nevertheless, I hope that you found the information useful. Please like, subscribe and check back for my next live show. This is Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.